Welcome to Hopalong Hollow. This is Jerry inside this old house. And today we're going to walk into a bathroom that would be a turn of the century bathroom. And the fact of the matter is, it's actually not original to this house because we had to create this bathroom. The reason we had to create the bathroom is because this house didn't have an actual inside bathroom until 1963. In 1963, a family moved in. They took a tiny piece of a bedroom, almost as small as a closet, and put in an aqua sink, a pink toilet, and a blue bathtub. And that is how it was when I moved in, in 1989. I talked to a man that had lived in this house when he was a child, and he said until they moved out in 1959, they had an outhouse, which is really a surprising because he also said they had gas lighting in this house, which was pretty modern at that time. So to have had gas lighting, but no inside bathroom, is pretty unusual. Now, <laughs> what we did when we moved in is we took out that teeny tiny bathroom, that 1960s bathroom, and we removed the wall. And what we ended up with was what you would consider a very small bedroom. And we turned that into a very large turn of the century bathroom. Now what would a vintage bathroom be, be without an, a cast iron tub? So the cast iron tub, we found it online. Oh, they weigh a ton. It was just a devil to get up the steps. But we managed to do it and then I began to restore it. And the way I did the um, surface along the side was I sponge painted the yellow two different shades of yellow. I was trying to emulate the wallpaper, the colors in the wallpaper, and then I stenciled the roses um, also to sort of repeat the rose pattern in the wallpaper. Now the tub itself is pretty beat up inside, but it's been restored three times and it always chips again. So we just leave it the way it is. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. It works. All you have to do is fill it with water. It gets really, really hot. The fixtures are reproductions, of course. And you can find those just about anywhere. I just love the old feel of this bathroom. I love the colors. I'm crazy about green. And there are bird cages hanging on the walls. <laughs> Just silly old bird cages. Gosh, my best friend gave me that bird cage when I was 21. Isn't that sweet? I can't imagine putting a poor little birdie in there though. What a horrible way for a little bird to live. One of my favorite things about old houses are wooden floors dinged and dented and scratched and worn to such a patina that they really have a warmth to them. Now this particular floor didn't really do much to it as far as sanding it or anything like that, but I did lay down a coat of stain. Then I created the checkerboard pattern. I painted um, this moss green and stenciled the roses in every other block. When I did the staining, I sanded down the green paint so that you could see the wood grain through the green paint. And it's been many, 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 many years since I've done this, but it looks like it's original to the house. And this is one of the things I really like about this, this room is this this big old stenciled floor. Old houses do not have great 
closets. And that's why there were always so many armoires to store your clothes in because the closets are so tiny you can barely get your shoes in there and maybe a couple of hangers. And so we had no closets in the house. So with this huge space um, in this little bathroom here, new bathroom, we needed somewhere to put our clothes and extra winter things. So we found this is a butcher, butler's pantry. We found this butler's pantry online. We drove all the way up to Pennsylvania to buy it, and it was in pieces. don't remember how long it took to put this bathroom together, but it was at least one or two months worth of work. Here are some of the pieces that never got shined up and restored. I don't know why. I don't know why they're still here and they haven't been put on. Do you ever do a job like you get practically your 99% done with the job and then you just stop? And then for years and years and years you don't finish it? Well, that's one of those little things. That's one of those little items. Those are the drawer handles that should be over here. Hmm, maybe one day we'll just actually get around to shining those up, putting them on where they belong. Um, I thought it would be nice to do an antiques collect collection on antique purses and these lovely little mannequins. I'm not going to tell you what they are. I'm going to let you guess. I think that hard working man deserves a hot bath. I wanted the wallpaper to re reflect the, the time period. I wanted sort of um, a look that would have been popular not only in the turn of the century, but going all the way into the 1930s. So I found these coordinating papers. And I used it all over the room on the top half of the room. But beadboard was very popular at that time. And so we wanted beadboard in this room as well. So the first four feet going up the walls is beadboard. So we got the sink off Craigslist. Found so many great sinks on Craigslist. We actually have four cast iron sinks that we found. Um, this one is not in perfect condition, which is perfectly fine. I, I like the little chips and dings in it. And I think, you know, if you go in my garden, I, I like the look of uh, perfectly imperfect. And that is the case in here. I mean, if this sink is as old as I believe it is, and it is about 1909, I found it in the 1909 Sears catalog, as you can see here. I sponged it first, and then I stenciled it right underneath the rim. And I was just replicating, once again, that wallpaper, which I think is a pretty wonderful pattern that would have been perfect for this era. Honestly, don't know what you call this look. Uh, is it um, Edwardian, Victorian? Is it English? Is it, is it French cottage? It could be any of those. And that wonderful old mirror right there was uh, came off a dressing table. Adjacent to the sink, in order to store everything, um, with the lack of bathroom cabinets, I'm using a kitchen cupboard, which would have been obviously in a kitchen, wouldn't have been in a bathroom. But because we have so much space in here, and because these are so beautiful, these old Hoosiers or kitchen cabinets from the turn of the century, they hold an awful lot of stuff. You can hide the things that are not accurate to the period. 
such as your toothbrushes, your toothpaste, your hairbrush, your shampoo, etc., etc. And then leaving room for all the lovely things that a lady at the turn of the century or a gentleman would have had laying out. And behind the glass are antique perfume bottles, soaps, mm, wax rabbits. I don't think they would have had those back then. And curling irons and clothes brushes, purses, jewelry boxes, etc. Which I'll go into a little bit later when I want to show you a couple of these collectibles up close such as these celluloid boxes, which would be a great subject matter for uh, collecting antiques. So we'll do that at a later date. If you're interested. The ceiling, pretty tall ceiling here in these old houses, I must have had a hard time heating them, and I, I know that. I can testify to that, because this is such a cold house, which is why I'm always wearing gloves. But this is a, a tin ceiling, but it's not really a tin ceiling. It's actually wallpaper. I had a devil of a time getting that wallpaper up, because if you ever tried to hang wallpaper on a ceiling before, it's really tricky. And the color of that paint was called buttercream really a pretty yellow. I don't remember the color of the wall paint, but everything has a lovely old feeling to it. And I have to tell you, this is just actually one of my favorite rooms in the house because it's just a really pleasant, pleasant, pretty room. Now, this used to have there was a stove. Must have been a stove in this room. I really need to cover that ugly concrete thing. That's where the stove pipe would have gone through. And this um, chimney right here was covered in plaster when we moved in, but I took all the plaster off because I love the look of that brick. I would not want to hide that brick. Just adds a little extra something to the warmth of the room. That is our vintage bathroom. Circa 1900 and something.